So you've probably been hearing a great deal about Jesse Smollett and uh, the hoax surrounding the hate crime that he uh, suffered through. Whether it's true or not, it is shameful to hear that, you know, you, you can't do that. It only makes matters worse. Maybe people won't believe him anymore. But you know what also happened around that time? Liam Neeson. Something that he said about getting a cost to find some bastard to knock him over. He was set out to, you know, had thoughts of vengeance and killing someone. And for that matter, I had to see what this Cold Pursuit film was about. I probably would not have been interested in it because I don't really care much for Liam Neeson's films. Now, he has made some great titles like Kinsey and Dark Man, which were great. But Cold Pursuit is a beast of its own. And I have to say, it's probably his best film. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say, since Kinsey. But they've become two completely different films. And it's a lot more different than the film that he done, uh, like The Grey or The Taken films. This one is very much in the sort of weird, darkly comic vein of a Fargo. Um, especially with the you know, snowy uh, uh, <laughs> winter setting in it. And him, you know, with the police chiefs trying to deal with their little crazy selves. So, just getting to the point of it. Just getting to the point of it. You probably heard all the news surrounding his comments, and how they had to cancel the premiere, and how it also affected the chances of him, you know, getting to star in more films. The film itself is about him trying to seek revenge for his son that was killed uh, by drug lords in a small town in Colorado. And so he sets out vengeance by using snowplow and, you know, firearms and whatnot uh, before he, you know, started going on a bit of a suicidal tinge of sorts. So it's very similar to a lot of the films that he's done over the recent years where he does this whole vigilante angle, the kind of movies that Charles Bronson used to do back in the 70s and 80s for the Death Wish uh, uh, franchise. But this time it has a bit of a weird, you know, Fargo vibe about it, but it also works its own mysterious way because it's so quirky and so strange and over the top. It kind of reminded me of the, the films uh, like uh, Crank, High Voltage, which wasn't really marketed as a comedy, but it definitely had a lot of scenes that were just random and just very funny in their own straight way. But also, more importantly, it reminded me of a great Netflix show, in fact, the best Netflix show Netflix has ever done, aside from Disenchantment, called Lily Harbor. It's one of the first shows Netflix has ever commissioned, or I think bought, and they put on their streaming service. If you haven't seen Lily Hammer, you should. It's set in Norway, which is also the origins of the director himself, uh, Hans Petter Marland, who also directed the original version of what Cold Pursuit was in Norwegian called In Order of Disappearance. Now, you probably have never heard of that film, but you heard of Cold Pursuit. Cold Pursuit is essentially a remake. And I have a very strict policy about seeing remakes. You know, unless it's a very good movie or I hear so much controversy about it, I generally won't go see remakes. I didn't go see The Upside. I didn't go see Star is Born for those very reasons. But I saw Cold Pursuit, given what the uh, stuff was said about in the news. And uh, there were definitely some surprises. And uh, I, I was definitely, you know, caught off guard by some of the weird uh, visual quirks they definitely had, where it you know, has these little... Uh, titles in shown in the film where it says, you know, this guy died, plus his uh, faith, whether he's a Christian or a pagan, Jewish, Muslim, of sorts. Uh, and there's also their nickname, but like uh, White Ball or uh, <laughs> Tiger or something like that. Uh, and it's uh, clever in its own sort of way, but it also has many of its own flaws. Like, it, we don't get to see a lot of Liam Neeson as much as we would have expected, which probably might be for the rest, especially if you heard the comments that he's made, but... Uh, I wouldn't go out, you know, to spend, you know, so much money to go see it, especially if you're worried that someone you know might think you're a racist, simply for going to see a Liam Neeson film. In the same way that you saw Mel Gibson's films, you know, when he said that whole thing about, the, you know, the Jews control Hollywood, and, you know, I hope you get uh, assaulted by a pack of... I don't even want to repeat that, it's so offensive. That killed his career. Now he's came back with Hacksaw Ridge and Daddy's Home 2. I'm sure the same thing will happen to Liam Neeson. The politics of what he said is a different story. If I go into that, I probably will get a lot of downvotes. But for the most part, the film itself is definitely a quirky one and a sort of curiosity point at that. And I'm glad to have seen it on the basis of what all the headlines surrounding what he said and so on and so forth. So I can sort of judge for myself whether this was good or bad. 
and for the most part, overall, just trying to get to the point of everything, is I have mixed feelings about it. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. I'm sort of in the middle, but maybe if I see it again, maybe my opinions will change. This is Skinny Evo signing off. Feel free to subscribe for more content every so often.